Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The name of Allah, the most compassionate, the ever merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafi anbiya illah. And may Allah raise the rank and grant peace to the most trustworthy of all of his messengers, Nabiyyana Muhammadin, our Prophet Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, and likewise that of his family members and companions, all of them, amma ba'd, as for what follows, then by the grace of Allah Ta'ala alone, and his blessings upon his servants, is that on this afternoon, the twelfth day of Rabi' al-Akhar, the fourth month of the year 1436, our sisters in America and in Britain, they gather together in their homes and some of them in their centers. May Allah Ta'ala bless them and their families. They gather together to listen to their scholars and to some of the students of their scholars, Hafidhahum Allahu Jami'an, to hear some beneficial advice to apply, to understand and to apply in their lives, to better their conditions with their husbands, to better their conditions with their, within their families, and firstly and foremostly to better their conditions with their Lord. May Allah Ta'ala grant all of our sisters' success in attaining this high and lofty goal. And so I've been asked to participate and to offer what Allah Ta'ala makes easy for me to offer to my sisters on this Sunday afternoon. And seeking the assistance of Allah, I say, Qala Ta'ala, that Allah Ta'ala has said, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ That the men, they are the maintainers of the women. بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْلَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْلُ Based on what Allah Ta'ala has bestowed upon some of them over others. وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And because of what they spend, meaning the men, from their wealth. فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتِ so the righteous women, they are devoutly obedient. Hafidatun lil ghaybi bima hafid Allah, and they are obedient and protective in the absence, meaning of their husbands, with what Allah Taala preserves. From Surat An Nisa, the thirty-fourth verse. Al-Allamatu Sa'di rahimahullahu ta'ala, the great scholar of usul and tafsir, in his tafsir of this verse he said, أَيْ قَوَّمُونَ عَلَيْهِنَّ بِإِلْزَامِهِنَّ بِحُقُوقِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى They are maintainers of them, the men are maintainers of the women, by enforcing the obligations that they have to Allah the Most High. مِنَ الْمُحَافَظَةِ عَلَى فَرَائِضِهِ Enforcing their vigilance and their continual performance of their, of their obligatory deeds. وَكَفِّهِنَّ عَنَ الْمَفَاسِدِ And to forbid them from forbidden matters or corruptive matters. وَالرِّجَالُ عَلَيْهِمْ and يُلْزِمُوهُنَّ بِذَلِكَ And the men have the obligation of enforcing that on them, on the women. وَقَوَّمُونَ عَلَيْهِنَّ أَيْضًا بِالْإِنْفَاقِ عَلَيْهِنْ They are also maintainers of the women through their provisions, through the way they provide. وَالْكِسْوَةِ وَالْمَسْكَنِ They're spending, providing clothing and a house to live in. فَوَظِيفَتُهُ أَنْ يَقُومَ بِمَا اسْتَرْعَاهُ اللَّهُ بِهِ So his duty, his job, is to uphold the trust that Allah has placed upon him. 
to look after the flock that Allah has put him in charge of. وَوَظِيفَتُهَا And her job, her duty, the woman's duty, الْقِيَامُ بِطَاعَةِ رَبِّهَا is to uphold obedience to her Lord. وَطَاعَةِ زَوْجِهَا And that she obeys her husband. فَلِهَذَا قَالَ فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتُ And this is why Allah said, the righteous women are devoutly obedient. أَيْ مُطِيَاتٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى They are obedient to Allah the Most High. حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ They are as well protectively obedient or obedient and protective in matters when he is not there. أَيْ مُطِيَاتٌ لِأَزْوَاجِهِنْ Meaning they are obedient to their husbands حَتَّى فِي الْغَيْبِ تَحْفَظُ بَعْلَهَا بِنَفْسِهَا وَمَا لَهُ So she, in his absence, she's so obedient to him that in his absence she protects uh, you know, herself, his wealth, his family, she protects everything. وَذَلِكَ بِحِفْظِ اللَّهِ لَهُنَّ وَتَوْفِيقِهِ لَهُنَّ And that is only through Allah's preservation of her and the success that Allah would grant to her. لَا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِنَّ Not from the women themselves. فَإِنَّ النَّفْسَ أَمَارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ Because the souls have an inclination towards doing evil. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ تَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَفَاهُ مَا أَهَمَّهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ دِينِهِ وَالدُّنْيَاهُ However, whoever places their trust in Allah, depending upon Allah, then Allah will suffice them from whatever they are concerned for fulfilling, either in their religious duties or in their worldly life. That is the end of some of the words summarized and partially abridged from the great scholar Shaykh Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala in his tafsir. So to set the pace or to set the subject matter that I'd like to be able to offer something to my sisters in this subject, a, a tool and a recording and a reference, insha'Allah ta'ala, for the future that will put to rest the issue that comes up so often in circles of our sisters who mix with the common women of the Muslims who are affected by Western life. And they are affected by the environment they live in to the point that they say, where is the obligation in Islam for a woman to obey her husband. And they challenge the very concept of a woman obeying her husband. Why do they do so? Because of this land that we live in. Because of the influence of the environment on them. Because of the upbringing that they have had in this land where they are taught and enforced that women are equals to men. And that even in a marriage, the woman does not obey the husband. Rather, they come together as a partnership, as an equal partnership, 50-50. And this is only from the plots and the trickery of the disbelieving, misguided people, who they themselves are suffering from very high divorce rates. And why not? And how could they have successful marriages when two people come together in a union and one of them, not one of them is in charge. There is no decision maker. There is no point of reference or leadership established in this partnership or this union. Rather, each and every issue that comes up is a debate. Each and every decision to be made is an argument. And there is no responsible 
member of that partnership who steps forward to make the decision on behalf of the other when there is disagreement. This kind of life, this kind of marriage will not be successful. This marriage will be full of argumentation. This marriage will be full of falling out, hatred, rancor. Why? Because quite simply, the two parties don't know their places in order to take them. So our discussion today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is centered around 25 or more hadith from our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each one of them should enforce and actualize for us what the position of the woman is in her marriage as it relates to her relationship with her husband. We look firstly to the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reported by Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him and his father. He said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ithnani la tujawizu salatuhuma ru'usahuma. There are two kinds of people their prayers do not go beyond their heads, meaning their prayers will not be answered. Abdun abiqun min mawalihi hatta yarji. A runaway slave in the system of slavery, until he returns back to his family, wa mara'atun asat zawjaha hatta tarji. And a woman who has disobeyed her husband until she returns, meaning until she returns to obedience. This hadith was collected by Al Imam Al Hakim in his book called Al Mustadrak. And the hadith was classified as being authentic, Sahih, by Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani, Rahimahullah, in his book. Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahiha, number 288. A similar narration, number two, was narrated by Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, who said that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Thalathatun la tujawizu salatuhum adhanahum. There are three types of people whose salat will not go beyond their ears. Meaning they will not be raised up to Allah and accepted by Allah. Al Abdul Abiq, the runaway slave, hatta yarja until he returns. Wa mraatun batat wa zawjuha alayha sakhat. And a woman who spends the nights while her husband is angry with her. Wa imamu qawmin wa hum lahu karihun. And an imam for a group of people whom they are displeased with or who they are angry with. And this hadith was collected by Imam Tirmidhi in his jami' and it was called Hassan by uh, Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala in Sahih al-Jami'. And the meaning of وَزَوْجُهَا alayha سَاخِطْ and her husband and she sleeps, spends the night while her husband is angry with her, bisababi, the meaning of that is because of her disobedience. And it does not enter, uh, a woman who disobeys her husband in a matter where he has ordered her to do something impermissible, something haram, this is not included in the hadith. For in this case, she disobeys her husband in order to obey her Lord who is above her husband in authority. And there is no obedience to a created being in disobedience to the Creator. And affairs that are haram, they are not included in the woman's obligation to seek the pleasure of her husband. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. The third hadith is another narration similar to the first two. Narrated by Fadala ibn Ubaid, Thalathatun la tas'al anhum. There are three types of people, don't even ask about them. Rajulun fa'araq al jama'a wa asa imamahu wa mata'asiyan. 
a man who split away from the jama'ah, split away from the state, or he split away from the Muslim unity, and he disobeyed the imam of the Muslims, he disobeyed his imam, and he died in that state of disobedience. And a female or male slave that escaped from his owner and he died in that state. And a woman whose husband was absent and he had provided for her, her worldly needs. فَتَبَرَّجَتْ بَعْدَهُ And she went out improperly dressed after him, meaning after he left. فَلَا تَسْأَلْ عَنْهُمْ So don't even ask about them. This hadith was collected by Al-Imam Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak. And as well, Al-Tabarani and his Mu'jam Al-Kabir and others. And it was collected by Al-Albani in his Silsilatul Ahadith Al-Sahihah number 542. And this hadith adds to the first two hadith an example of disobedience of the woman. The first two mentioned disobedience and the husband being angry but without in an ambiguous way, without identifying what it is that a woman would do that would cause such a situation. And this hadith adds an example. That is, she goes out with tabarruj. She goes out improperly dressed, either wearing makeup or wearing jewelry that is either seen or heard clinging uh, or clanging you know, and, and the sound of the jewelry can be heard from inside of her clothing. Or she goes out not covering all of her body and so on. This is an example of the disobedience to her husband, which is also disobedience, foremost, firstly and foremostly to Allah Azza wa Jal. And she has uh, entered into a category of people whom our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said about them, do not even ask about them. A similar narration narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in the Sahihain and in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, he said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا بَاتَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ هَاجِرَةً فِرَاشَ زَوْجِهَا if a woman goes the night staying away from her husband's bed, meaning that he has requested her for intimacy and she avoids him, then the angels curse her. The angels curse her until the morning. And that hadith was collected as mentioned in the Sahihain. In one narration, إِذَا دَاعَ الرَّجُلُ امْرَأَتَهُ إِلَىٰ فِرَاشِهِ فَأَبَتْ If a man calls his wife to the bed, meaning for intimacy, and she refuses, فَبَاتَ غَضْبَانَ عَلَيْهَا And he goes the night angry with her. لَعَنَتْهَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ حَتَّى تُسْبِحْ And the angels go on cursing her all night until the morning. An authentic hadith, as mentioned, collected in the Sahihain. And the Prophet wasallam said in our fifth narration, For those sisters who are still saying, Where is the obligation to obey our husbands? Prove to me from the book, from the sunnah, that I have to obey my husband. The Prophet wasallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ ما من رجل يدعو امرأته إلى فراشه فتأبى عليه I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul there is no man who calls his woman to his bed meaning for intimacy فتأبى عليه and she refuses 
إلا كان الذي في السماء ساخطا عليها حتى يرضى عنها except that the one who is above the heavens is angry with her until her husband is pleased with her. And that's a version of the hadith that was collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih as well on the authority of Abu Hurairah. The sixth hadith further clarifies how much a woman is required to respond to the order of her husband. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Wasallam said, as reported by Zayd ibn Arqam and collected by Al-Bazzar in his Musnad, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا دَاعَا الرَّجُلُ إِمْرَأَتَهُ إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ فَالْتُجِبْ When a man calls his woman to his bed, then let her respond, meaning with obedience, let her respond favorably. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِ قَتَبٍ Even if she were on top of a qatab. And a qatab has two possible meanings, as explained by the scholars of hadith. The first meaning is the place where a woman would ride on a mounted, on, a, on an animal. This is a, a wooden type of carriage that could be placed either on top of a camel or between two camels or other uh, riding beasts. And so even in that situation, meaning during a journey, at, when she has you know, uh, ascended and mounted an animal, at that time if he requests her for intimacy, she should comply. Another meaning of the hadith that the scholars say qatab means, Qatab is the birthing chair or the birthing table, the place where the woman goes when she is in labor to give birth. And so, as the scholars say, وَالْقَصْتُ بِذَلِكَ الْمُبَالَغَ فِي الزَّجْرِ عَنْ امْتِنَاعِهَا مِنْهُ The meaning is, a, you know, a very severe warning against a woman preventing her husband from intimacy. Naam. So look at this hadith, which was called Sahih, authentic, by Shaykh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani in Silsilatul Ahadith al-Sahih, number 1203. How the woman is required to respond to the order of her husband, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in these kinds of circumstances. One more comes to us in the Sunan of an Nasai and a Tirmidhi from the, from the report of Talq ibn Ali radiyallahu anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا دَعَ الرَّجُلُ زَوْجَتَهُ لِحَاجَتِهِ فَالْتَأْتِهِ If a man calls his wife for his need meaning for intimacy, and let her respond favorably, let her comply. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ عَلَى التَّنُّورِ Even if she were at the oven baking, right? The tanur, perhaps in those times was an outdoor oven where they would go and bake like perhaps similar to the modern uh, larger ceramic ovens that have a burrowed out or a central area where things are cooked on the inside of a very large ceramic uh, oven. And so even if she were there cooking and taking care of uh, a meal or preparing a meal, she should still comply to her husband's request of intimacy. And Al-Munawi in his uh, book called Faydul Qadir, which is an explanation of Al Jami' al Sagir of Al Suyuti, where this hadith is indexed, he said, Al the, you know, the, the tanur is the thing where the bread is baked. Important note for balance here is this is so long as it does not 
connect to or have within it or along with it uh, a neglect in, in fulfilling his right, there is a neglect of or a loss of, uh, of wealth, meaning some food is spoiled or some other harm like that. So in this case, the woman can preserve the food if she can preserve the food without it being either lost or uh, eaten by animals or uh, overcooked or burned and so on, then she must fulfill the right of her husband. Otherwise, she needs to take care of the food and her husband needs to be patient in those cases. Again, showing just how much the woman is obliged to comply with and respond to her husband. For all of those women saying what? Where is the evidence that a woman has to obey her husband? My sister in Islam, seek Allah's aid. Seek knowledge of the deen of Allah. Asking Allah firstly and foremostly to aid you in understanding his beautiful religion. And then turn towards the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And learn them. And do not be like those arrogant women who continually ask, where is the evidence? And when the evidence is presented to them, they ignore the evidence. And they go on saying, where is the evidence? My sister in Islam, your prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith collected by Al-Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih from the report of Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him who said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا When a woman prays her five, meaning her five prayers in the day and night, meaning every day as well, وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And she fasts her month, that is the month of Ramadan, meaning every year. وَحَصَّنَتْ فَرْجَهَا And she remains chaste. وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا And she obeys her husband. قِيلَ لَهَا It shall be said to her, أُدُخُلِ الْجَنَّةَ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شِئْتِ Subhanallah. It will be said to her, Enter paradise from any of the gates of paradise you so choose. Allahu Akbar. What are those things that the woman must fulfill? in order for this great reward to be said to her on the day of recompense. May Allah Ta'ala give us His protection from the horrors and perils of that day. Those things are praying the five prayers, fasting Ramadan, guarding her chastity, and obeying her husband. Four matters. I want you to look at these four matters as some of the scholars of Usul would do by looking at the relationship between these four matters, in terms of the ruling on these four matters. I ask you, what is the ruling on praying the five daily prayers? And you say, fard or wajib, obligation, no doubt. And then I say, what is the ruling on fasting the month of Ramadan? And you say, of course, the same answer, obligatory. Then what is the ruling on guarding your chastity? You say again, with all confidence, obligatory, no doubt. Then the fourth of these four things mentioned all together is obedience to the husband. So I ask you, what is the ruling in Islam on a woman obeying her husband? And your answer should be the same as the previous three answers, if you know your religion. And if you were to fulfill these obligations, which are very basic, then not only would you be completing the obligation or fulfilling the obligation in a way that is pleasing to Allah, but from the generosity, the grace and the bounties of Allah is that you will receive this reward. You will, it will be said to you on that day, the day of judgment, Enter paradise from any gate you so choose. While the fasting people, those who fasted will enter the Jannah from the gate of Rayyan. And other people of virtue will enter the paradise from specific doors that relate to 
things that they did and only Allah knows the reality of all of those doors and gates to paradise. However many there are in totality, it will be said to you, a woman, a wife, who fulfilled her basic duties, praying her salat, fasting her days in Ramadan, preserving her chastity, and obeying her husband for basic matters being fulfilled, enter paradise from any gate you so choose. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty and majestic, to allow everyone hearing these words to give them success in accomplishing these four basic matters, to give them stability upon that until they die, and to accept that from them, and to grant them that they hear this statement on the Day of Judgment. Enter Udkhulil Jannah, enter paradise. Min ayyi abwaab al jannati shi'at. From any gate of paradise that you so choose. Allahu Akbar. Another hadith, very similar, it's called the Shahid from Anas ibn Malik. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him. Collected by Imam al Bazar in his Musnad, Ida Salat al Mar'atu Khamsaha. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If a woman prays her five, وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا She fasts her month, وَحَفِظَتْ فَرْجَهَا And she guards her um, private parts, وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا And she obeys her husband, دَخَلَتِ الْجَنَّةِ She shall enter paradise. The tenth hadith, that we're going to look at today was collected by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and Imam Al-Tirmidhi in his Jami' from the narration of Abu Umama radiyallahu anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَعْطَى كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّهُ Verily Allah has given each and every person their, their fair rights. فَلَا وَصِيَّةَ لِوَارِثِ So there is no bequeathal to be given to an inheritor. Meaning those who inherit by the book of Allah, they have their set inheritance and they are not allowed to be given additional gifts, which we call part of the will and testament. الْوَرَدُ لِلْفِرَاشِ وَلِلْعَاهِرِ الْهَجَرِ The child who is born out of adultery, is ascribed to the bed, meaning the father or the husband of the wife of the woman. The husband of the woman, even if she committed adultery. The child born out of that adultery is the son of the husband in the marriage. وَلِلْعَاهِرِ hajar, And the fornicator gets a stone, meaning nothing. He gets nothing, no relationship with that child. وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And their accounts are with Allah. وَمَنْ إِدَّاعَ إِلَى غَيْرِ أَبِيهِ And whoever claims to be the son of someone who is not his father, أَوْ إِنْتَمَا إِلَى غَيْرِ مَوَالِيهِ Or a slave who was freed and he ascribes to other than the one who freed him, فَعَلَيْهِ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ التَّابِعَةُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Then upon him is the curse of Allah that is ongoing until the Day of Judgment. وَلَا تُنْفِقُ مْرَأَةٌ شَيْئًا مِنْ بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ زَوْجِهَا And it is not for a woman to spend anything, to spend anything from the household of her husband except with his permission. Except with permission of her husband. And it was said, not even food? Not even for her to give some food in charity? That is the very best of our wealth. And again, that hadith was collected by uh, Ahmed and at tirmidhi The hadith was called Sahih in Sahih al jamia and Irwa' al-Ghalil, both by Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani. And furthermore, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, لا تأذن امرأة في بيت زوجها إلا بإذنه 
A woman may not give permission for anything to be taken from the household of her husband except with her permission. Or she may not give permission for anyone to enter, I'm sorry, into the house of her husband except with his permission. That was collected by Tabarani in Al Kabir, in his Al Mu'jam Al Kabir. And it was called Sahih by Al Albani in Sahih Al Jami Al Sagheer. And the Prophet وسلم, said, furthermore, regarding this issue of getting the husband's permission before gifts are given from the house, لا تجوز لامرأة هبة في مالها إلا بإذن زوجها إذا ملك زوجها عصمتها It is not permissible for a woman to give a gift from her own money, from her own wealth, except with the permission of her husband, so long as that husband is in charge of her, meaning so long as she is not divorced or outside of the authority of that husband. Uh, Tayyip, that hadith was collected by Al-Imam Ahmad, Al-Imam Al-Nasai, and Al-Imam Ibn Majah in their Musnads and Sunan. From the report of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, it was also collected by Ibn Majah in his Sunan from the report of Ka'b ibn Malik. And it was called Sahih by Al-Albani in Sahih al-Jami al-Saghir. So a woman may not even give a gift from her own wealth except with the permission of her husband. From the words of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The 13th hadith for today, which is similar to that one. وَلَا يَجُوزُ لِمْرَأَةٍ أَمْرٌ فِي مَالِهَا إِذَا مَلَكَ زَوْجُهَا عِسْمَتَهَا It is not permissible for a woman to do anything with her own wealth so long as the husband is in charge of her, except with the permission of her husband, collected by Imam Abu Dawood and Imam Al-Hakim, on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr again, and I would refer you to Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahiha of Shaykh al Albani, number 825, where he called this hadith authentic, Sahih. And the Prophet وسلم, said in another version uh, of the same hadith, لا يجوز لامرأة عطية إلا بإذن إلا أن يأذن زوجها. It is not permissible for a woman to give a gift except with the permission of her husband. My sisters in Islam, those of you who are asking, where is the evidence in Islam for a man, for a woman to obey her husband? Where is the proof that requires me to obey my husband? We say, dear sister in Islam, the proof is in front of you as you have heard so many times. And we go to the 15th hadith now, which is collected by Al-Imam Al-Tabarani in his Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir from the report of Wathila radiyallahu anhu. He said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ لِلْمَرْأَةِ أَن تَنْتَهِكَ شَيْءً مِنْ مَالِهَا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ زَوْجِهَا It is not for a woman to use or do something with any type of her wealth except with the permission of her husband. Naam. The 16th hadith, our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تسوم المرأة وباعلها شاهد that a woman may not fast while her husband is present, meaning not traveling, إلا بإذنه except with his permission, غير رمضان Except in Ramadan. In Ramadan she fasts without his permission, as it is an obligation. And she does not allow anyone into his house while he is a resident, while he is not traveling, while he is there, except with his permission. And whatever she spends of his earnings, Without his order, meaning she gives some charity without consulting him from his wealth, then half of the reward goes to him. Then half of the reward goes to him. 
that hadith is authentic and it was collected by uh, Bukhari and Muslim and others from the report of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu. And furthermore, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, لا تسومن امرأة إلا بإذن زوجها. It is not for a woman, or let not any woman ever fast except with the permission of her husband. And here, this hadith was collected by Al Imam Ahmad and Al Imam Abu Dawood and others. And it was called authentic by Al Albani in Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahihah number 395. And the meaning of a woman not being allowed to fast except with the permission of her husband is fasting outside of Ramadan. And the reason for that is he may have an interest in having intimate relations with her and he is not to be prevented by her optional fast as her duty to be there and comply to her husband takes precedence over voluntary acts of fasting. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. Furthermore, in a hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari, from the report of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, number 18 for us in this gathering, لا يحل لامرأة It is not permissible for a woman أن تسوم وزوجها شاهد For her to fast whilst her husband is a resident, is there in the city إلا بإذنه Except with his permission أو تأذن في بيته إلا بإذنه And she is not allowed to allow any entrance into her house except with his permission. وَمَا أَنْفَقَتْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَمْرِهِ And whatever she spends of any type of spending without his direct order, فَإِنَّهُ يُؤَدِّ إِلَيْهِ شَطْرَهُ Then she gives half of it to him. Meaning, as understood from the previous hadith, half of the reward, of the recompense goes to him. From Sahih al-Bukhari. And number 19 comes to us from the Mustadrak of Al-Imam Al-Hakim, narrated by Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu. And while the hadith has been called authentic, sahih, by Al-Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala, other scholars have called this hadith weak uh, because of a man named Rabi'a ibn Uthman in the chain. But I'll mention the hadith, and it is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or allegedly said حَقُّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى زَوْجَتِهِ أَنْ لَوْ كَانَتْ بِهِ قَرْحَةٌ فَلَحَسَتْهَا مَا أَدَّتْ حَقَّهُ The right of a husband over the wife is so much that if he had a wound and she were to lick that wound that would not be giving him his Right, that would not be enough to fulfill his right over her. And as mentioned, this hadith has some controversy over its authenticity. We'll mention other hadith in the with similar meanings. And these are the ahadith which are generally used by the scholars who say this hadith is authentic by its numerous routes. In another hadith, our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is number 20 for us. لا يصلح لبشر أن يسجد لبشر ولو صلح أن يسجد بشر لبشر لأمرت المرأة أن تسجد لزوجها من عظم حقه عليها It is not for any human being to make sajda, to prostrate to another human being. And had that been befitting, had that been suitable and acceptable for a human to make prostration to another human, I would have ordered the woman to prostrate to her husband due to the great right that he has over her. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ And by, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, swearing by Allah, لَوْ أَنَّ مِنْ قَدَمِهِ إِلَى مَفْرَقِ رَأْسِهِ قَرْحَ تَنْبَجِسُ بِالْقَيْحِ وَالصَّدِيدِ I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul that if from head to toe he was uh, covered in, uh, in, in, in um, wounds that were bursting out with pus and ooze, 
And she went to him and she began to lick those wounds. This would not be completing the rights of the woman. And again, this hadith has been called Sahih by Sheikh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani in his Sahih al-Jami. The hadith is originally found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and the Mujtaba of Imam al-Nasai. Rahimahum Allah. And the hadith has been criticized as well, but likely the hadith is authentic due to its numerous routes. And one more in the meaning of that hadith is the statement that has been reported from Aisha radiallahu anha, from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Law amartu ahadan an yasjuda li ahadin. This hadith was collected by Imam Ibn Majah. The meaning is, had I ordered anyone to make prostration to another person, then I would have ordered a woman to do that, to prostrate to her husband. The hadith was collected as mentioned by Ibn Majah. It was collected by Al-Tirmidhi as well from the report of Abu Huraira. It was collected by Imam Ahmad from the report of Mu'adh. It was collected by Al Hakim from the report of Bureyda, all of these collected and authenticated by Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al Albani in his Sahih al Jami'. And you can also look at Irwa al Ghalil, number 1998. And one more hadith of a similar wording, which was narrated by Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa, radiyallahu anhu. He said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Said, لو كنت آمرا أحدا أن يسجد لغير الله Had I ever ordered a person to prostrate to other than Allah لأمرت المرأة أن تسجد لزوجها I would have ordered a woman to prostrate to her husband Meaning out of respect, not out of worship وَلَذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ And by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad لا تؤدي المرأة حق ربها. A woman does not fulfill the right of her Lord حتى تؤدي حق زوجها كله or كله until she fulfills the right of her husband entirely. حتى لو سألها نفسها وهي على قتب لم تمنعه. So much that even if he were to ask for her, for intimacy with her, and she was on a qatab, again, either uh, on the saddle, on a riding beast, or at the birthing chair, she would not prevent him uh, at that time. That was collected by Imam Ahmad and Imam Ibn Majah and Imam Ibn Hibban. And you can refer to, again, Irwa al-Ghalil, number 1998. The 23rd hadith for us is the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrated by Abu Huraira Radiallahu Anhu. He said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kullu nafsin min bani Adam sayyidun. Each and every person from the descendants of Adam is a chief in some respect. Farrajulu sayyidu ahlihi. So a man, he is the chief of his family. And a woman is the chief of her house. Look at it closely and notice how the man firstly is made the chief of his family. And then after that, meaning the chain of command is that the mother is the chief of her house. Meaning... After the authority of her husband over her and everyone in the house, she is second in command and she is in charge of the children and in the, of the affairs of the house. This hadith was collected by Ibn Sunni in his book Amal Al-Yawmi wa layla and it was authenticated by Al-Albani rahimahullah in his Silsilatul Ahadith al-Sahiha number 2041. And as we draw near to the last few narrations, Again, we say to our sisters in Islam, dear sister who asks what's the proof for the obligation of a woman to obey her husband, 
Do not be heedless and do not be arrogant. But listen to your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to these words that have come from him and authenticated by the scholars. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our 24th hadith for this gathering, لا تؤذي امرأة زوجها في الدنيا A woman does not harm her husband in this life. Harm here is general. إلا قالت زوجته من الحور العين Except that his wife from the women of paradise says لا تؤذيه قاتلك الله Do not harm him. May Allah fight you. فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ عِنْدَكِ دَخِيلٌ He is but a visitor with you. يُوشِكُ أَنْ يُفَارِقَكِ إِلَيْنَا And he is about to separate from you to come to us. Allahu Akbar. This hadith has been authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani in Silsilatul al Ahadith Al-Sahiha, number 173. And it was collected by Imam Ahmad and Imam Al-Tirmidhi from the report of Mu'adh ibn Jabal. رضي الله عنه. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in our 25th hadith, لو تعلم المرأة حق الزوج If a woman were to know the right of her husband, لم تقعد ما حضر غداؤه وعشاؤه She would not sit while his lunch or dinner is served حتى يفرغ منه until he finished his meal. That was collected by Al-Tabarani in his Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir from the report of Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And there is some discussion of its authenticity. However, it was called authentic Sahih by uh, Al-Albani in Silsilatul Ahadith Al-Sahiha number 2166. Our 26th hadith is that our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade the women to be talked to except with the permission of their husbands. Naha and to nisa illa bi azwajihin. He forbade the women to be addressed with speech except with the permissions of their husbands. That was reported by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, collected by Imam al Tabarani in his Al Mu'jam al Kabir and authenticated by Al Albani in Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahiha in number 652. In some narrations of the hadith, like what is collected by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, it is Naha an nasta'dhina ala nisa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us from seeking entrance, meaning asking permission from a man's wife at his door to enter to, into his house to visit him. Meaning if the woman answers the door that we do not speak to them and we do not ask for entrance into the house, and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Our last hadith, which is befitting for us to end with on this day, and may Allah Ta'ala make us those believers who when they hear the speech of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say, Sami'na wa ata'na, we hear the Messenger of Allah and we obey him. He said, "Unzuri aina anti minhu." To a woman, uh, the uh, the aunt of Hussein ibn Mihsan, who was a tabi'i and Allah knows best, and she is possibly a sahabi, or if the narration is authentic, she is a sahabiyya. He said, "Look to your position f- from him. Look to your position with him, meaning look to your position with your husband." فَإِنَّ مَا هُوَ جَنَّتُكَ وَنَارُكَ for verily he is your paradise or your hellfire. He is your paradise or your hellfire. This hadith has been collected uh, by a number of uh, imams of hadith, like Imam Ahmad, Imam Al-Hakim, Imam Al-Bayhaqi, and many others. And uh, Al-Hakim, he graded the hadith as being authentic in his mustadrak. And Al-Dhahabi remained silent about it. There are some points that someone could make mention of, the status of Hussein ibn Mihsan and, and, uh, and what's related to that. However, the hadith was called Hassan, authentic, uh, by Shaykh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his uh, Sahih al-Jami' al-Saghir. And with that, 
we'll close asking Allah Ta'ala to rid us of arrogance, to rid our hearts of arrogance and to increase our hearts in love and compliance to his speech and the speech of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah Ta'ala bless all of our sisters who have gathered today and make these gatherings proofs in their favor. Make these gatherings ways that their deen and their relationship with their Lord is improved. And make these gatherings something that is a source of joy on the Day of Judgment. And may Allah Ta'ala place a distance between all of us and our sins, those in the past by forgiveness from Allah, and those in the future by preventing us from them, a distance like the distance He has placed between the East and the West, the two horizons. May Allah Ta'ala forgive us for our sins, and may Allah Ta'ala enable our men to be upright, dutiful, and protective maintainers of their wives and children, as we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our wives exemplary, believing women, those who are obedient to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who are dutiful and obedient to their husbands, seeking the pleasure of Allah, entering paradise through that. Allahumma Ameen, wa sallillahumma, wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin, وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته